Chapter 31, Not the Plain Old Plain The legions of the darkness loom on the horizon. However, Athena feels much better about this battle. Time has passed and the demigods are healed. They are ready for combat. Pan has brought his small regiment of satyrs and fauns. They fall in line behind Athena. For the time being, she commands the archers and the catapults. The archers have sharpened the tips of their arrows. Their catapults are loaded with huge rocks and boulders. Once the initial assault begins, she would lead a squadron of the ground forces attacking from the east. Tyr's army would fight from the west. And then there was the center. Horus and his Egyptian army are finally battling at full strength. It would be a sudden show of force. The darkness could never be prepared for what is about to occur. Athena stares across the battlefield and sees something that causes her pause. A jackal-headed figure barks orders to an eager group of frost giants, evil demigods, and disenfranchised titans. Could it be that Anubis himself will lead this charge? If this is to be the case, she wants to be the one burying her spear through his chest. She is not the only one to have noticed this. Tyr has his eyes set on the masked Egyptian as well. It would be a great honor to capture Anubis and deliver him to Odin. He stares across the battlefield and locks eyes with Athena. It is clear that they have the same target in mind. For his part, Horus doesn't seem to care one way or another. If it is to be Athena or Tyr or anyone else aligned with the light, the result will be the same. Horus raises his hands and points to Athena, then to Tyr. He wants to discuss strategy. Athena arrives first. What is it, Lord Horus? Your archers should focus primarily on the larger targets, the frost giants and the titans. They will be the easiest to hit and are also the most dangerous in close combat. If you can eliminate as many as possible, our chances improve immeasurably. Tyr catches but a fraction of the conversation. My troops are ready. We await your signal. Tell me about the frost giants, Horus asks. They are much quicker than they look, but have weaknesses in their knees. If we need to fight close, swords are a very good choice as a weapon. Horus soaks this in. A good general knows not only where his opponent is strong, but where he is weak as well. What are our primary flaws? With your Egyptian army here, we are no longer outnumbered. However, we do not match well with them in close quarters, Athena explains. Speak for yourself, Athena. My army is well equipped to engage in hand-to-hand -hand warfare. And, I dare say, our weapons make yours look primitive. Careful, Tyr. I have certainly saved you more than a few dozen times. Horus is irritated. Silence, both of you! My army is made of skilled spearmen. If the larger beings can be pared down, then my troops will be able to handle the second wave. Athena capitulates. As you wish. The enemy does not appear to be prepared. Return to your stations. Launch the catapults immediately. Then rain arrows down upon them like a deluge. Tyr and Athena glare at one another the entire way back to their posts. Each wants to win Horus's favor, and if it comes at the expense of the other, then so be it. Upon Athena's order, fifty catapults release boulders into the sky, pelting the enemy force. They are reloaded quickly, and a second wave fills the air. Archers! Commence! Athena commands. The archers take aim and release their arrows. The skies are flooded. Upon their descent, many find targets. The flesh of many titans and frost giants is pierced. They are wounded badly. Another sky of arrows hits the air. Tyr's archers use more advanced technology than Athena's Greeks and Romans. Crossbows send their darts further and faster. Reloading takes less time. Their pointed tips cause more damage than the traditional bows. Those under Tyr's command may not be as skilled or as accurate as Athena's, but the weapons themselves deliver a blow she cannot match. In any event, the darkness have been caught off guard. Anubis is flat-footed. He scrambles to make adjustments. His own archers take aim and send their arrows into the heart of the light. However, because they were hurried, their aim is not true. 
Only a few find their mark. Anubis orders the Titans and the Frost Giants to charge into the enemy territory. Those who are badly wounded are expected to attack as well. They are sitting ducks for the Archers of the Light. The closer they get, the easier the aim becomes. Anubis gathers the winged Egyptian demons and sends them flying above. They swoop upon the archers, knocking the archers over in droves. The battle has changed. The Frost Giants and Tyr's army are now fighting in close quarters. Tyr's army withstands, but suffers great losses. As more and more Frost Giants charge, he has no choice but to pull his army back. Athena's troops charge the Titans. They are grossly undersized and do not fare well against their enormous enemy. Athena charges into battle herself, successfully slaying several Titans. She flashes a quick glance at Horus. He is preparing his army to attack. Athena needs to rally her troops and combine hers with those of Horus. Retreat! She shouts. Retreat! Anubis sends his Egyptian forces into battle. The Greek and Norse archers have been overrun, and he's willing to risk casualties of his own. The Egyptians rush into the fray. They attack the frost giants and titans from behind. Athena watches this massacre of the darkness by members of the darkness themselves. She is astonished. What in the name of Zeus is happening? She stares across the battlefield and looks at Anubis. But then... She sees a figure walking slowly across the combat zone, showing no fear. It is set. At that moment, she realizes what has transpired. She is quickly surrounded by Egyptian spearmen. One by one, she fights them off, but there are too many. She is captured and escorted to Horus. Tyr is captured as well. He is furious. Why are you doing this? He demands of Horus. You are sworn to defend the light. My friend, there is no light. There is no darkness. Now, there is only Egypt. You're mad with power, Athena exclaims. You take Ra's position, now you want it all. You're not the horse I used to know, Set arrives. No, I'd say he's a much improved version. He is what I like to call... The big picture. So now what? You're going to kill us? Tyr demands. You know if we'll come back angrier and more united than ever. Set shakes his head. Won't be that simple. Look out on that battlefield. Do you see the dead? If I left them there, sure, they'd reanimate. Might even invade at some point. Set pauses for dramatic effect. But if they are in prison somewhere, Horus and I control, then you are without an army. How does that sound? Tyr doesn't have an answer. Athena seethes. Good always wins in the end. The light shall rise. You're so cute when you're mad, Set says. Pardon me for a second. He looks at her chains. Don't go running off anywhere. Set Horus and Anubis have a brief meeting. It is apparent to Tyr and Athena that the conversation concerns their fates. Set emerges from the huddle. The good news for you, Athena, is that you will be transported to Olympus. I want you to sing of the victory that occurred here today. Spread the information throughout the realms. As for you, Tyr, I'm afraid you're going to the underworld. I really can't have both of you running around. That is to be your fate. Tyr is clearly fearful, but he is strong. I will never kneel before you. Of course not. You'll be trapped in a cage of ice. You'll wish to kneel before me, but I'll never allow it. I'll rob you of your station, but not of your foolish pride. Upon Horus's order... Athena is forced to the Sphere Eternus. Give my regards to Zeus, Horus says, before transporting her to the Great Mount. And Anubis, it's time for your reward. You were quite the general on the battlefield today. Anubis smiles. He wonders what this reward might be. Guards! Seize him! Anubis is suddenly surrounded by Set's forces. I don't understand. Your prize is that I'm allowing you to flourish in another domain. 
I am exiling you to Earth.